Hello there. I'm Pickle Rick! Let's do it, guys! Right. It's morphin' time! What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Geek Culture Talk with me, your host, Brendan. And as you can see, I'm by myself again. Thomas isn't here, so yeah. Anyway, so, for today, I am reviewing The Mandalorian Season 2, which, yes, I know, I'm very late on this. The season ended about, like, a month ago or two months ago by this point, but still, no harm in doing it now. So, yes. Alright, so, of course, I'm wearing, also got a... Baby Yoda shirt on or Grogu shirt on. Uh, you can't see. I'll stand up for this part so you can read it. Uh, it says, "What does it say?" Actually, uh, when when the bass drop, when that <laughs> shoot, when when the beat when the beat drop when the beat drops. <laughs> God, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the only Mandalorian merch I have. Uh, hopefully, it pops up on the video, not because of the green screen. Uh, if it if it doesn't, I'll just like overlay the video clip and not have it like that. Hopefully, this also pops up on screen too. The Little Yoda Funko, which it, it popped up when I did the green screen from my Rise of Skywalker review, so I'm sure it's fine. Uh, this is all my stuff I have for Star Wars stuff. Uh, have, of course, the movies here and Ahsoka, which is also fitting, Yoda fitting also. Uh, this Star Wars comic here has Boa Fett in it and has uh, X Wing, so uh, all this fits very well. I have no actual Mandalorian merchandise to show up besides the shirt for this. Uh, so, yeah, I'd like to get some Mandalorian merchandise one day. It'd be cool, cool like a like a Din Djarin action figure, that'd be cool. But, anyways, so enough about the stuff on the table. Let's get into the actual review of The Mandalorian. So, you know, I still, I wanted to do a review of The Mandalorian, but I was very busy in December. Like, of course, I was doing a bunch of Christmas videos then, so I had no time to get to reviewing the show. But, like I said, no harm in doing it now, so we're reviewing it now. Uh, to give my quick thoughts on the first season, because season, I never reviewed the first season, uh, I liked the first season. I didn't, I wouldn't say I... Loved it like I, like I know a lot of people loved the the first scene like I mean it was a big hit I mean I liked the show I thought it was great uh, I I wouldn't say I like loved the first season like season like I liked it I def I liked it a lot like it was definitely uh, I mean it looked great there was some great acting and action and it, 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 was, it was definitely a, a great new place for Star Wars to go and explore some new fun characters and areas uh, there were unfortunately some like very slow and boring episodes I thought in the first season because like it was like what episode was it, it was around like because there were a lot of filler episodes in the first season, like, like, we had, like, like episode one was a great start, off, start. then season two felt kind of, like, boring-esque, because it was kind of just, you know, running around this plant after he got Baby Yoda, and then having to fight that big bull creature for, you know, the, the Jawas, and uh, then episode three picks up again, but then, for, like, episodes, like, for three straight episodes, it was filler episodes, they weren't related to the plot, so there was the episode on that forest planet where we met Cara Dune. Uh, that was the most boring episode. Excuse me. Sorry. That was the most boring episode in the whole season, I thought. And then there was the second most boring episode, which was the Tatooine episode with a a character whose name escapes me right now because I did not care for him, but he was that other bounty hunter character. Well, tried to be a bounty hunter character with Din Djarin. The character who I described as when I first saw him as a he looks like a character who belongs in, on a Disney Channel original movie, like a high school based kind of movie with his like his earring, like his fr fizzy frizzy hair bit, his freckles. Like he looked like he belonged. He looked like one of those like typical jerk characters you would see in a high school Disney Channel movie. Like that's what he did. Tell me, you can't tell me that's not what that character looked like. I'll put it on the screen here, but you can't tell me that's not what he looked like exactly. Like uh, that episode was like pretty boring. I didn't care for it either. Uh, episode 6 was actually pretty good. That was the only filler episode I liked from Season 1, because, of course, it was the, you know, prison riot. Well, not prison riot, but it was one where he teams up with Bill Burr and a few other people to break that guy out of prison. Uh, that was that was a really, good, a really good episode. That was solid. And Episode 7 through 8, they were, of course, story-based. They were very good. So, I, I liked the first the first season definitely very much. Uh, I didn't love it because of those problems I had, but I liked it. So, I gave it about a 7 out of 10 the first season, I probably would say. 
Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but for, I was excited for Season 2, so I was very inter interested in seeing where Season 2 was going, because they left off on an in interesting note, like with Moff Gideon, the Darksaber, and what's going to happen with Baby Yoda. Are we going to bring him back to his people or not? Like, are we going to meet more of Yoda's species? Uh, you know, of course, and during the time when we were waiting for Season 2 to come out, you know, we heard a lot of stuff about it, mostly just uh, re returning characters. Like, like, of course, we know we heard Ahsoka was going to be it, and, like, Bo-Katan, and, like, Boba Fett, and so many people... Like got kind of cra kind of crazy, and I'll get in, I'll get into those characters coming in. So, my initial thoughts when the season season started, uh, the first episode I thought started like it started off. I won't go over every episode individually, but it started off I think way better than the first season. Like the first season, the first episode was a solid first start. Like it got you, it got us into the world immediately. Like okay, so here's these characters. This is now the world now. Five years post Return of the Jedi. This is the the state of the galaxy now. It was a good start to showing, you know, this corner of the galaxy and also showing what Star Wars can be like on TV, and it was uh, great. This episode, though, I just felt was a, kicked off at a better start. Like, of course, like, you go, you go to Tatooine again, which, like, it's, that's fine to do. Uh, you fight a giant, like, crate Dragon, which is the first time we ever, we ever saw a crate Dragon, I'm pretty sure. I think I think there was... I don't, I don't think... I'm not sure if there was ever a crate Dragon in one of the previous games. Like, I don't know, maybe the Knights of the Old Republic game. I don't know. But I think this was the first time... We ever saw a crate dragon, and they used IMAX cameras for that battle sequence, and just it, it was a really a really solid episode, like great action. So I thought it was a great start to the season, honestly. And of course, the whole season's overall arc was, of course, of course, Mandalorian or Din Djarin, he's trying to get Baby Yoda to a Jedi and take and leave him with them so that so he can be trained and such. And you know, one thing I thought with this season more so than the first season is that I thought there was a better focus on the storyline of the overarching story of the show because with season one like I said there was like a bunch of filler episodes and you know it felt like just too like we weren't focused on like I know a lot of people would like that about the first season that you know it wasn't it wasn't strictly just being the storyline it was like oh we we could go off and have these other adventures with these other characters and other plants which like I know a lot of people did like that and I'm not saying I didn't hate that idea or concept like like I said I liked episode seven not no Episode 6 with Bill Burr, that was a great episode. Uh, but I, I don't know, I just didn't like how it wasn't too, it was not that focused on its story. I mean, because I was like, I was shocked by that, because I was like, this is 8 episodes long, why is it only to, it's distracting itself from the story so much, it's kind of weird. Uh, but I felt like even here it was much better, more focused on story. Like, you have, like, your, your filler episodes, like, there was, not, not a lot, though. Like, the only real filler episode there was, was episode 2 with the frog lady. But there was more better focus on the story. Like, even if there was an episode where it was filler a bit, like, it, like stuff like when you go back to uh, the plant that Cardoon and... Shoot, what's it? Grief Karga? I almost forgot his name. When you, go, when you go back to the plant where Kara and Grief are stationed on, you know, that was a bit of a filler episode, but not entirely because there was actually some, like, relevance to the overarching story and it added stuff to the narrative a bit. So, like, there was... So, even, when, even if there was a filler-based episode... There was something of relevance to a, the storyline going on now, or future storylines, so there was a better focus on stuff like that. Like I said, even the one episode that was a true filler episode, which was the Frog Lady episode, uh, even there, like, it was important to the story, I guess, because it established, you know, a bit of Din Djarin's character, like, he fulfills promises, he keeps them and stuff, and establishes the galaxy a bit, like, the Republic and whatnot, so there was that. Uh, of course, all of our favorite characters return, and, like, they're all, everyone does a great job in acting-wise. Uh, the action I felt this season was kicked up, uh, I, I, sorry, I like how I just, I talk about the actors quickly there, and then stop talking about them, like, that was ran, random of me, but, whatever. But the action also, so the action, like I said, I think was kicked up a notch this season, like, like, like I said, the IMAX shot battle sequence with the Krayt Dragon was fantastic, it was amazing, and I love seeing, like, him and Cobb Vamp teaming up in Southern Fighting. Uh, Ahsoka's lightsaber battle with that one character uh, was very, was great. Shot nice, looked excellent. Uh, just like when the, whenever they're about when they were storming, like when Bogotan and Din Djarin were storming that you know Imperial ship and fighting stormtroopers, that was great. You know, just, there, there was a lot of and of course, Bo Boba Fett's like beast mode. He goes on the stormtroopers in that one episode, like just some real solid action this whole season. Season honestly, I feel like a lot of the season was kicked up a notch in terms of its quality in terms of, like, you know, folks focusing more on the story 
and fantastic action, like just really great in that aspect. Uh, of course, the one thing I do want to talk, I'm going to get into now with the show, is what this season, of course, was there were a lot of legacy characters in the season. And, like, there was eight episodes, and there was, like, a, a legacy character, like, every so episode. So, like, there was, like, there was, which is insane. Like, honestly, when you look at, like, episode one had Boa Fett briefly in it, and but also, they also had Cobb Vamp, who was actually, well, well I can't say legacy character because he hasn't been around for too many years, but he was a pre-established character in the, in the novels. So he was there. Episode two, nobody was there, but in episode three, we had Bo-Katan, and then we had episode four, nobody. But then episode five, we had... Like Ahsoka, and then by episode six we had uh, you know Boba Fett, and episode seven he was still there, and then episode eight Bo Katan, Boba Fett, and uh, Luke Skywalker. So there there was a character almost every. So there was like only really two episodes the whole season where there was no returning character out of a whole eight episode season, which is insane. And you know it's gonna be kind of a point of contention, I guess, because I know I remember when a lot of these rumors were coming out. There was concern for this season that are, are they overfilling with characters who are pre-established to the universe? Because there were a lot more rumors about other characters who were going to show up in the season. Like, there were rumors about also, you know, Rex was going to show up and Sabine Wren. Like, it got to the point where it was a big joke, basically, about who was going to be in the show. Like, oh, you know, I and Versio and Ezra and Thrawn and the Gonk Droid from Episode 5 or whatever. Like, it was just kind of a joke, like, basically. Like, oh, everybody's in this now, like, like, Smash Bros, everyone's here, like, uh, of course, not every character who was rumored showed up in the show, there was no Rex or Sabine, but still, quite a hefty amount of characters, plus one big one, which we'll get, which is Luke, which we'll, we'll get into Luke, I'm gonna talk about him separately, uh, here's the thing, I do, I know a lot of people had concerns about these characters showing up and, like, being in a lot of the episodes, because, you know, one would have been enough, but also, but considering how many there were, there was this fear that, you know, a part of what made the show great to begin with was going to be lost because a lot of people, why a lot of people loved the show to begin with was because it was its own little sector of the Star Wars universe. Like, because yeah, Star Wars is this big inter, like, locking universe and storylines, but it's all, like, of course, a lot of times in the last few years, we haven't had any, any true, like, thing that was kind of separated in some sense from other things. So, like, this was kind of the first, if that's the right word to use for it, I don't know. But this was the first thing that was kind of like, it's only, it was in the universe, it had, like, references and connections, but it was own it was own separate thing. We had a, a cast of new characters, new locations, new designs, new ships, like new everything. It was its own little separate like section of the universe to tell its own new story. And like, like I said, there was connection and references. Like of course we had the Dark Saber show up, which was a heavy connection back to the Clone Wars and Rebels. But it was still its own thing. It was very like small. It was it, not not small. I don't like it was its own thing. That's what I'm saying. And people love that about the show. So there was a fear going into this season that that was me lost a bit because, like, we have all these characters who are showing up, like, like, Ahsoka, Boa Fett, Bo-Katan, like, all these people, like, like is it, are we going to lose focus a bit? And, well, yes, I, yes, I will say, like, because they are definitely heavily f focuses in their show, like, I mean, like, they were big deals, they were big deals, like, of course, they were, it was big deals for a lot of these characters, like, Boa Fett's finally returning to Star Wars again, Ahsoka's making her live-action appearance, like, they're all, they're all big deals for stuff like that alone, uh, I will say, like, I don't want to see, like, I don't want to see them, like, a show up all the time, but, like, these characters, like, they, they were handled well, like, I'll say this, like, I mean, like, Ahsoka, I thought, like, she was in one episode and that was enough, I'm like, okay, good, that's fine, Bogtan, I was shocked that she was in two episodes, I'm like, okay, but we'll work with that, Boba Fett was in four episodes, which is surprising, like, four, an eight episode show, or season, and he was in four of the eight episodes, that's, like, half the season he was in, and yes, yes, I know, like, he was only in, like, the first episode briefly, but still, he was in four episodes, like, half the show, so, like, big deal, uh, but I won't deny, like, it was awesome, like I said, like, like Boa Fett and, and Ahsoka's fight sequences they had in their separate episodes, their main episodes was, like, incredible, they were awesome, like, and it was, it was great, uh, but yeah, like, they were great, and I thought they were all handled well, they were given, like, even though Bo Boba Fett was in the show a lot, I thought they at least handled him well, like, okay, don't really focus on him too much, like, okay, we set, we set him up in the first episode of the, of the season, then he comes back later on in, like, episode what, episode, what episode was it he comes back in, that was episode six, yeah, he comes back in that episode, and, you know, it was a, he was a big focus in that episode, 
And then next episode, episode seven, he's in it, but not really in it that much. Like the focus is more so on Din Djarin and Bill Burr's character, uh, Mayfield. And then he's, in, then he's in episode eight for a little bit also, then he leaves as well. But then Bo Katan's the episode. So, I mean, yeah, I don't, I definitely agree. I don't want to, I don't want to see them like, like constantly having new character or pre-established characters in the show. But I, I thought it was all handled well, their appearances in the show, like every character. It was great, it was great seeing Tamara Morrison back as Boba Fett. He actually did, did pretty well as a character. He was pretty badass. I, I love seeing, like, they brought Kay Sackhoff into play Book 10 in live action, because she was also the voice in the Clone Wars and Rebels. So that was awesome. And, of course, Ahsoka, like, that was awesome seeing her in live action. And Rosario Dawson was a perfect casting. On, like, I know people, like, like, Boss Logic, he, like, did a fan art of her, or, like, photoshopped an image of her, make her look like Ahsoka. And Dave Filoni saw that and was like, hey, yeah, let's, let's get her for Ahsoka. And I think, I think she was even, like, campaigning for a couple of years to play Ahsoka. She wanted to. So, and, and she looks awesome. I mean, like, I do have the problem that they shortened her Toguru, Togo, Togoruda, Toguruda? Is that what it's called? Uh, no, shoot. It's, no, Toguru is the name of her species, not the the tendrils on her. Like, let me, shoot. God damn it. How did I forget this already? A Toguruta, so she, that, that's her species name, but, like, her tendril, you know what I mean? Like, the thing, her white things on her head, the tendril things, whatever they're called. I forget, but, yeah, of course, they shortened those things because, like, they found out that it was actually harder, it'd be easier to do fight sequences with if they were shorter. Which, I get that for practical reasons, but, you know, like, why? Because that doesn't make sense now to the character and the continuity, because last time we saw her in Rebels, they were, like, down to, like, her chest. Now they're, now, all of a sudden, now they've shrunk it down to, like, neckline, which really doesn't make sense. Like, here's an easy way to get around this. Like, if you were worried about that, like, just, why not when she's just doing, like, a sitting a sitting scene or talking, like, she has the longer tendrils, but then action sequence, you, you put a shorter version on the actress, actress's head and then put, like, motion capture dots and then CGI in longer ones later. Like, there's nothing wrong, there's not, that wouldn't be that hard, like, and plus, and plus also, like, she'd be moving around a lot, so, like, how much would you even notice that? And, like, Plus, you're Mandalorian, and you're on Disney+. Plus. You have the budget to probably do that. So, I don't know. Like, it seemed kind of dumb to me. Like, I know, I know it's a bit of a nitpick. Like, I, I hate... I wish they kept it, because now it just doesn't make sense in the continuity. Because if you go to Rebels and to this, like, oh, so they're longer, now they're shorter. Because it, it doesn't make sense to the species also, because, like, as that species gets older, those grow longer. So, it makes no sense they go shorter, shorter now. This, it doesn't make sense. I don't... I don't want to go too much into that, but just, I don't. I didn't like it. Uh, what was I about to say now? I don't remember now. Shoot. Uh, yeah, her episode was fantastic. I love seeing her like her talk about stuff, and of course, we learn about more about Baby Yoda or Grogu now. Uh, I'm looking at him like it's Baby Yoda, but it's not. Like we learn, of course, Baby Yoda's name is actually Grogu, which I first thought when they said Grogu, I thought, oh, that is a species name. Are we finally learning Yoda's species? Is it called Grogu? Oh no, it's actually his name. Which, it's, it's actually, I like that name, Grogu, so it works well. Uh, and we learned a lot about him, which I did not think we would. We learned, of course, he was at the temple, like, back during, like, way, like back back before even Anakin was there. Because we know he's the same age as Anakin. So he, he was there, like, before Anakin probably showed up. He was there during the Clone Wars and the prequels. Like, it was insane. And somehow, someone saved him now from being, of course, killed by Anakin. And, of course, and his memory's kind of clouded and dark during that time, so we, he doesn't even exactly know who saved him, so that's very interesting. I don't really, there's a lot of theories about who it possibly could have been that saved him. Some people are saying, oh, Obi-Wan, or Yoda, or Yaddle. Some people are saying Anakin himself maybe saved him, which I'm doubtful on that a bit. Uh, possibly, who knows, I don't really know. Uh, shoot, who's the, dang, who's that one Jedi who's, uh, I, have look, I, have look, I can't remember to look this up again. Oh my god. It's like Quinlan the Boss. Yeah, there's I have a theory about him. Maybe he did it too. Like, there's a lot of theories about who it could possibly could have been that saved Rogu. Uh, we probably won't get an answer for a while then. So, yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, Boba Fett was also awesome to see him. Like, he was great. The guy thought it looked awesome. I thought it was like when Cobb Vanth had the armor on, it looked very stupid. Like, it, didn't, it literally did not look like it fit him. But I'm watching him wear it, it looks much better. Uh, and, of course, he painted, he cleaned off, like, made it much more professional-looking, which, like, you know, it looked pretty cool, and he's getting his own spin-off show, of course, now, like, a little mini-series next year, or at the, end, at the end of this year, so that's exciting. 
Uh, Bo Katan was also great seeing her in live action. It was awesome, and she looked ident like looked perfect from the like, one to one from the shows to the from the other shows to here. So, and now to talk about just the last one of uh, the big the big one who came to the show. Of course, was Luke Skywalker. Uh, so yeah, Luke Skywalker in R two D two was a you know that that was the one they kept a secret very well. They kept that secret, and it was. Here's my thing. I definitely have a split of my opinion on this. So, so when when he, when he did first show up, like when Luke first showed up, I was like, I was shocked. Like everyone, I'm like, what the hell, Luke's here? Like it was surprising. And, I, and then a lot of people theorized, like, oh, it's probably gonna be Luke who's gonna show up to find Grogu. Of course, Grogu. Ahsoka told Din Djarin to take Grogu to that Seeing Stone on that planet where like the one of the first Jedi temples were there, and he contacts someone in the Force and Luke reached out to Luke. Like we had, there were so many theories about who it could be. Luke was the only logical one it could be. Some people were saying, oh, Ezra maybe, or Cal Kestis, or even Mace Windu. Uh, I, I knew it couldn't really be any one of those guys, because uh, Ezra it don't really make, it wouldn't make sense. I feel like they want to let, like, uh, EA and who's the other studio that worked on the freaking Jedi Fallen Order? Whatever, I'll put it in the video. But like, they'll probably, they probably want to let them do their thing with Cal Kestis right now. Mace Windu was a big shot in the dark, but... It's, Luke was like, the big, the most logical one, but and, and he shows up and it was awesome. The scene was badass. I, I like loved it. Uh, and then of course they show Luke's face, which I knew as soon as Luke showed. I I was I was kind of wondering, okay, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna do an interactor or CGI young Mark Hamill? But I kind of knew it was gonna be the former because it just seemed like they did that approach with Rogue One. So there's no way they're not gonna do that, and they did it. Which, when I first saw him, I'm like, okay, it looks weird, but fine. But then they show a closer-up face, but I'm like, okay, it looks a bit better. And they show a farther shot again, I'm like, oh, this doesn't look doesn't look good at all. Like, honestly, like, I think... I, it, I'll say, I think Luke's face in the show looks worse than Tarkin's in Rogue One. Which, I know it's a bit of a con that might be a controversial thing. But, like, I know, I know Tarkin did not look great in Rogue One. Like, he looked like a CGI character entirely, did not look real. But at least with that, Tarkin, at least there was some movement in life of some sorts to the care to that CGI face. To this Luke, there's not nothing like that. He's just dead in the face, just dead. Cause like the problem with like, because it was mostly with, mostly with the eyes. Like the eyes were like, because the eyes are the eyes are always the most expressionist part of the face. Like that, if you don't get the eyes right when CGIing a face, you're not gonna get the emotion performance right. And here they don't. They know it at all. It's because. They're just stone... Ugh, my throat's sore now. They don't get the... The eyes just look like cardboard cutouts. They don't look right at all. Like... So he's kind of just stare... He kind of just, like, looks at the at the characters like this. I am. I'm a Jedi. Like, it just looks like... Okay, it did not look right. Like, it looked like, honestly, someone photoshopped a face over him. And, like, using a Photoshop thing, just kept moving the mouth up and down. Like... Because <laughs> that's always a problem people have with... CGIing a face, like, it's always, the problem, the problem has always been the mouth. The mouth never looks good, because it's always, like, the, that's always, always one of the, like, it's both that and the eyes are hard to get right. The mouth, like, even, even, even people who do deep fakes, like, the mouth never looks right on deep fakes. Like, for example, um, a, uh, there was a deep fake online where someone took, like, Br Brandon Routh, Brandon Routh Superman from Christ on Infinite Earths, and they deep faked Christopher Reeve's face onto him. And it looked pretty good besides the mouth. The mouth was kind of like hanging open at times when it wasn't really talking. Which that's, all, that's always a hard thing. I don't really think that would be an easy thing to get done right. And I mean, it, it, the mouth wasn't hanging open here, but like it just had a very like r robotic movement to it. It was kind of just like, you know, moving. It wasn't like, how do how I put this? It was just, it was moving, but not moving with what, it, what he was saying. I mean, it was, but like, it looked very just, it just didn't look right. So, yeah. And like just it just didn't there was even a point where like when he when he bends down to pick up Grogu I mean Grogu not Grogu uh, when he bends down to pick him up and you see that just the top of his head for some reason that one shot of the top of his head looks like Luke from Battlefront Two it's super random just like I don't know why like I thought it looked like I just thought it did not look great so, like honestly I heard two things should be done because honestly we're not really there with the face technology to recreate someone's face. I mean, we are a bit, I mean, like, Marvel's proven it's pretty good, like, with Michael Douglas and Kurt Russell and Rob Downey Jr. and Samuel L. Jackson during Captain Marvel, because he looked really great, like, the CGI de-aging. 
Uh, but still, there's times where it, that technology is still not there. Like, like if you if any of you have seen the the film The Irishman, like they de-age, of course, Robert Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci and Al Pacino throughout the entire film, and it never looks great in those films. Like, I mean, Al, De Niro looks fine in that movie. Pesci never looked like he was the age. Like, it's just... We're not quite there, and this really shows it. Like, it was ambitious for this show to do that. I mean, even with their budget, it's higher than most shows. But even still, with that budget, like, it was a bit of a risky move to do that. Honestly, two things should be done, I think. Either, one, you get Sebastian Stan in, which a lot of people want. I agree, because he looks identical to Mark Hamill. Even Mark Hamill said himself, yeah, you should play me one time. You look great. And, like, and you had him unemployed at the time. Like, he was doing Falcon Winter Soldier for you guys, for Marvel. Like, I don't think it would have been that hard to, like, one day when he wasn't filming for the show, ask him, hey, you want to come down here to help the film for this scene? I I'm sure he would have been like, yeah, sure, absolutely. Because he, he said he want, he would, he's expressed interest in doing that one time. So, you could have done that. Or, another thing you could have done, and, like, wouldn't easy, like, just don't have Luke take off his hood. Because, like, honestly, like, if you just... Even if we don't see his face, like, we would know it's Luke by the, the one black hand, the lightsaber. Like, we would know it's Luke. Like, it, it would be obvious. Like, you could have had a cloak over him. We, we, you could have shown the mouth a bit, but it'd be not someone else's mouth. Like, it would have worked. It would have worked fine that way, I think. But, no, we have to get the age of Luke, which... Here's my other thing. I mean, like, here's the thing. Already showing these characters, like, having Ahsoka and Boba Fett and all these people... Uh, sorry, can you hear that? That's my computer in the back. Uh, having all these people show up already was one thing. Having an original trilogy character show up was another thing. I mean, Boba Fett was an original trilogy character, but he's more, more so a background character in Empire and Jedi. He was not much. He's a supporting character, and so not much. Luke was a main, like a main character of the original trilogy. So like, that's a bigger thing. Bringing one of those guys in, bringing like, bring either Luke or Han or Leia, any one of those characters in. But of course, they bring in the biggest one possible, Luke. And look, I knew it was kind of a foregone conclusion they were going to probably bring Luke in at some point. Like, but I didn't think it would be this early. Like, I thought, like, the show would maybe end, like, the final season would be, you know, maybe, maybe, like, we're the final season, the final season would be how this season ended with, like, Grogu goes off with Luke to train as a Jedi. I thought that's how the show would end, like, the, the final season of the whole show. Not season two ending. It just feels like the shark was jumped way too soon here in this season with Luke. Like I said, I liked seeing Luke. The this, this scene was awesome. It was incredible, but at the same time, like, just... It, it's just such a big shark jump. Like, part of me, like, thinks, like... Like, look, like I said, like I said, if you want to have Luke show, I think it should be more so a final season thing. But this early on, it felt like just too much of a shark jump, honestly. And I don't I don't want to see Luke reappear again. If he, if, like, look, once was already enough. If he appears again, that's going to be too much. That'll be too much, because, like... Again, a lot of people feared saying, like, this show was, was about this new corner of the galaxy and new characters. And but now we're having all these like, legacy characters show up. So it's one, th and it's a big shark jump to have Luke Skywalker in the show. And, like, like, like I said, if he shows up again, that'll be too much. I think that'll be just too much. I feel like he probably will because of how Din Djarin talks to Guru saying, oh, we'll see each other again. Uh, so implying, well, like, we'll, we'll probably more than likely definitely see Grogu before the very, very last season of the show, so... We probably might see Luke again, I don't know, but I... I, I have a feeling we probably will if Grogu does, does come back at some point, but... I don't want it, though, but I feel like it will happen, because I think that's it's just too much to have, like, Luke back again. It's just... yeah. And... Another thing, is I felt like this season ended... It felt like too much of a finale. Like, it felt like a, a, a entire finale to the show, like, the way it ended. Like, I don't know, because I felt like the whole... Oh, yeah, Grogu's going off now. Like, I felt like that was just kind of like a, you know, an ending to the show. I feel like the whole a whole, ident the whole identity or, like, one one part of the show show's identity was, you know, this relationship, this, like, father-son relationship of sorts with Din and Grogu. But now he's not here, so, like, I feel, to me, I feel like part of the ident identity of the show is gone. And, I from from how it ends, it sounds like, He'll probably be going off to now help bo Ten try to reclaim Mandalore, because now he's technically the ruler of Mandalore, because he defeated Moff Gideon in combat, now he owns the Darksaber. So, which, I mean, that's another thing. bo Ten's probably sticking around for the rest of the show, possibly now, or for at least next season, a lot. Which, 
If so, that's fine. That's fine. Like, she's, like, a Mandalorian character. So, like, that is fine if you want to have her keep her around. But but don't bring in any, any more characters in. I don't want to see too many characters being brought in. I don't, I don't want... I don't want to see, like, so many... I don't want to see Boba Fett or Ahsoka appear a lot. Or maybe maybe not. Like, I feel like this, this was enough already, this season. Like, this was enough to have... Like, this was enough, just to having all these characters show up as it is. More than likely, we might see them reappear again, though, because... Supposedly, like... Cause we know Ahsoka's getting her own spin-off show, and there's also Rangers of the New Republic. So, and supposedly there's a lot of theories that it might tie into... Like, all three of these shows might cross over in, like, a... Avengers kind of thing, and like come together to defeat Grand Admiral Thrawn, which was teased in the Ahsoka episode, and so possibly that might be. I've heard theories that we might get into the, into the Chiss War from the old legendary material that involves Thrawn, so we might get a big crossover of all the three shows. But like, look, if that kind of thing happens, like that's fine. If it's a, if it's a coming together of all the three shows as a big battle thing, that I feel like is fine. But I don't want to see all these characters. Like I don't want to see. Like, cares like, like Boba Fett and Ahsoka, or, and of course, not, not, not Luke, like, appear a lot on the Mandalorian. Like, if Boba Tan sticks around, that's fine, like, fine, whatever. I don't want to see all so many legacy characters start showing up on the show, though. Like, I don't, I, I don't. And, so yeah, but, but like I said, Boba Tan's probably sticking around. Season 3 seemed like we're gonna be, like, battling, trying to reclaim Mandalore a lot. Uh, I don't know how much so. Like, I hope, like, next season we still, like, hang out with a bunch of the other characters, too. Like, still have Cara Dune in there and Grief Karga. Because we only have one episode of Grief Karga in this season, which I found super shocking. He was one of the main characters of the last season. Why was he... Why was he only in one episode? I don't get it. Why? Like, could it be because Carl Weathers directed, directed that one episode he was in? Maybe that's... He was too distracted with doing that? I, I doubt it, though. I don't know. It's weird. He was, he was even in the marketing showing, like, yeah, Grief Karga, here's Carl Weathers, but, like, why why is he barely in the show, though? He was, I don't know. This is weird. Uh, I think I've touched on everything I can. Like, like of course, there are spinoff shows coming, Ahsoka, spinoff show, like, she's gonna go battle Thrawn, like, it's gonna be, it, that's essentially the Rebel sequel, but live action, she's gonna go try and hunt down Thrawn, we'll probably see live action Sabine and Ezra, uh, Real, and Boba Fett's getting his own, a, probably a limited series in December, it's saying Mandalorian's release date for the time being, the book book of Boba Fett. It'll probably be a one-and-done season because they already have one Mandalorian-based show, so they don't want to have two running at the same time. Uh, but I'm excited for that. Can't wait to see how that goes. Uh, yeah, honestly, is there anything else to talk about still I'm forgetting? Uh, oh, yeah, there's also potentially they're teasing that, you know, Snoke was created from Baby Yoda's DNA. Like, because, of course, the episode, they talk about how but of course, we in the one episode of Grief Karga and Cardoon on their planet. Of course, we go to a Imperial facility and find a cloning facility, and they're talking about how you know this this is all we could make from the DNA we got from the test subject, which of course was Baby Yoda or Grogu from the first season. And a lot of theories online that this might be how uh, Snoke was created. Um, possibly, I, it's definitely a potential idea that maybe that is how it happened. Maybe, um, they'll probably they'll probably explore it in later seasons, later episodes. Uh. Hey guys, so this is the additional thing that I want to talk about in the review, but I completely forgot about it, so I'm going to talk about it now quickly. Uh, I want to quickly just talk about the Mayfield or Bill Burr, that episode of him. Uh, it was one, definitely one of the best of the whole series, honestly. It was, it was like, because like, I honestly didn't think they would go the way they would take Bill Burr's character, because you thought like from the first episode he appears in season one, he'd be just very like one note kind of side villain, like not, not one nose kind of... You know, this is your fun kind of typical like kind of bad guy jerk guy who doesn't doesn't get along with Mandalorian or or Din, uh, and then implied he'll probably come back at the end of his last episode of season one, and he does come back, and they add a lot to his character and the story. I learned that he used to be his former M Empire, which I think they established but prior in the first episode he was in, but they established he was a prior Empire sharpshooter, and you know he left because the Empire because he was not happy because like, of course he was involved in Operation Operation Cinder from Battlefront Two campaign, so nice connection back to one of the games, so great continuity there. Uh, I saw just how, like, he just couldn't take the Empire anymore. He thought it was just ridiculous. All his his men, his good men died during that nonsense. So he just couldn't take it anymore. He left. And which leads to this fantastic episode where, like, of course, he has that, they have that first of all, they have that scene in the truck where he talks to Mandalorian or Mando, <laughs> Mando about 
how you know like what's what's really the difference between like Mandalorians like or and the Empire and whatnot like what's the difference between your rule like you're saying he says how like at one point you said you couldn't take off your armor but at another point you say now you can't show your face and there's a difference between those two rules and talks about how like you know stuff like uh to and we're you know we're not bad guys we're not the Empire to so these people we're invaders no matter what on their planet we're we're just coming on their planet just doing what not what not. Uh, all that great stuff, talking about how, like, you know, the people probably fought, a lot of people probably fought in the, in the wars for Mandalore, probably didn't have a choice at all, and such, and, like, if you're, and talk about how, if you're, on, if you're on Mandalore, you believe one thing, or if you're on Alderaan, you believe another thing, and how, guess, his, and he says, guess what, neither one of those, pla neither of those places exist anymore, just bring him a lot of great points, and then the, this hit, the great scene on the end of the episode where they're forced to kind of sit down with this Imperial agent officer, Imperial officer, not agent, and, you know, they're trying like to keep their cover so they don't get blown. And he starts talking. He's very, he's very creepy. Just a very evil, smiley-looking freak. And like he used to be old, like commander to Bill Burr's character Mayfield, but he doesn't remember. He doesn't remember Mayfield, and whatnot. But of course, he's like talking about how like you know, uh, man, people believe they want freedom, but what they actually want is order. And when they start wanting that back again, they'll come crawling back to us and have the empire seize control again. And just like. The whole scene is fantastic, and then you just see Bill Burr's reaction on him the whole time is like just fantastic. He's just like just, just fighting her not to shoot him, and then he does shoot him near the end. It's just the whole the whole episode of Bill Burr was just fantastic. It was probably it's definitely one of the best episodes of the whole series. Honestly, it's it was just, it was just really great. Uh, just really good. There's another thing I want to talk about with this episode, and I saw a post on Instagram point this out to me. And I want to give credit to Pedro Pascal for this because in the scene when they're sitting down with that Imperial officer, he has to, Pedro Pascal has to take his helmet off for the scene that has has the actual face shown. And for the whole scene, he never once uses his peripheral vision to look around. He always like fully turns his head everywhere to like look around. And in that post I saw on Instagram, it says how that's a very weird, like unnatural movement. Like you should move your whole head like that. But not unnatural if you've been wearing a helmet for most of your life. Because he points out, because he's so used to, like, you know, communicating and talking and doing everything with that helmet on, it's very weird for him to not have it on for this long period of time. Which is only a few minutes, but still, that's, it's very weird and off-putting for him. So for him, he's not used to, like, using his eyes to look around. So he has to, like, fully turn his head everywhere to, like, the, to, look, to look at people and, like, and talk and whatnot. Because that's what he's used to, which I thought... That, that, that's actually, I never noticed that, but that post on Instagram pointed out to me, and I thought, that's really good. I have to, I have to give credit to Pedro Pascal for, like, doing that, because that, that's, that's quite good. That's, that's really good. Uh, honestly, yeah, that probably, I don't know, that probably, that might be episode seven, not, no, it, it is episode seven. Episode seven of season two probably might be my favorite episode of the, of the season, because of all that stuff alone with Bill Burr and, like, that scene with Pedro Pascal. Uh, just all really great stuff. It probably might be my favorite episode of the season, and some great jokes also, so, yeah, probably my favorite episode of the season, it's, it was quite good, so, but, yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about with that episode, so, yeah, anyways, so, let's get back to the rest of the video now, shall we? Yeah, honestly, yeah, I, I liked it, like I said, I liked it, I'd probably give this season an 8 out of 10, like, like, you know, I, I complain about things, like, yeah, I complain that they, yeah, not, not to the, a big degree, like, like I said, I don't want to see these legacy characters appear a lot, or maybe once it was good enough, but like, but it was still handled well for the most part. Luke, I thought, was a bit like too much of a, sh a shark jump, a jump the shark thing. But Ahsoka and Boba Fett, they were all fine how they were handled. Uh, like the, the better fo focus on story, action was incredible. Just it was really, it was really good. I thought this was a better season. It was really good. I thought this was just a better like season than last season. So uh, I'm interested interested in seeing where season three goes. So that should be exciting. So, yeah, uh, I feel that I don't think there's anything else to talk about. So yeah, um, thank you all for watching. Um, tell me in the comment section down below what did you all think of the Mandalorian season two? Uh, did you like it more than the first season? Did you not like it more than the first season? I don't know. Tell me in the comment section down below. And yeah, thank you all for watching this episode of Geek Culture Talk. And I'll see you guys all later for another episode in the future. So yeah, see y'all later. Goodbye.